Hi, this is attorney Mike Gravin coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And today we're going to take another look at the Fez in a little something we're going to call Sovereign Citizen Court Fail Number 8. I've been through all of these. I'm looking at the timestamps. I'm just figuring out now. I don't have it in chronological order. It doesn't really matter. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> it's just all funny. So I'm just going to give uh, my reactions in sort of the order that I see them. Well, here we are, still complaining about the defense attorney. I see that this is actually the same date as another video that I did, but it's a, it's a different segment, and uh, the the issues are all the same. <laughs> uh, so here we are. The first time we met, man, you stated for the record that um. Uh, Judge Smith did do that. I did a video on that uh, court appearance, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, he he first uh, pointed him, then then took him off, and then put him back on because he got some crazy filings. No, Judge Smith did not do that. In fact. <laughs> Watch the poor defense attorney uh, non-verbally telling the judge that yes, Judge Smith did do that, and then and then try to get his his uh, client to to calm down because he's making a fool of himself. But but of course the client will have none of it. When we first uh, addressed this matter, no 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 I'm talking to you. When we first addressed this matter, you read on the record last video that. You did not understand what Judge Smith, Judge Smith meant by that this matter was to be adjourned until the defense uh, required, uh, inquired representation. That's what you said. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. The word you're looking for is acquired representation. I mean, this this is rough. I mean, obviously he doesn't know anything about law, but let's let's just start with the basic understanding of the English language b before we proceed here. Mr. Keesler was not on this matter when he came here, man. So therefore, he's not on this matter now. I do not require the services of the Office of Public Defense. And if he was on this matter, there's never been an interview. There's never been any discovery folded. There's never been any indictment folded. Uh, you won't talk to him or let him speak. I don't know what, what you expect uh, him to do for you under that circumstance. We don't have any copies of the uh, official state of New Jersey certified as this county public records that were stolen by Matthew T. Dill and are unlawfully held by the Office of Prosecution. We don't have copies of that pursuant to the court with rules that are, I heard you mention plenty of times, that stipulate that uh, we're supposed to be giving copies of those instruments or those original instruments ought to be transferred back because they're not contraband or issued in the indictment. Well, this is not what you're saying, Matt. So, we, I don't have any information uh, relative to this matter, ma'am. So, uh, the account numbers that you read, I don't have any information pertaining to them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, it proceeds that took place downstairs before Judge Smith, uh, Your Honor. He had removed the Office of Public Defender from our friend, Mr. L. Um, he then later reversed that ruling and sent the matter upstairs to Your Honor. So, uh, as a point of clarification, when we came up here, you had indicated that, uh, given the fact that Judge Smith had reversed that for the Public Defender's Office, was in this matter. All right. Um, Thank you now, for refreshing my well, record. Uh, no, no, now, sir, I'm talking. But this is not your case. Well, I'm talking objection. He is in not by the attorney. In your ACL, he may not be not Nobel. Nobel. Not Nobel. In your Nobel. ACL, Mr. Kiesler is speaking to the court. Whether he's speaking on your behalf or on his own behalf, please exert, please extend to him the courtesy that has been extended to you and let him finish speaking. No problem. I just want to clarify. You have an opportunity to respond. Please listen. No problem, man. I just want to clarify who he's speaking on behalf of before he makes his statement. He doesn't have to respond to anything that you say. He's speaking to me. Well, hallelujah. The judge finally says something reasonable to him. It's, it's very gentle. It's very mild. But we'll take it. It's baby steps. But it's baby steps in the right direction. Thank you, sir. And that brings us to our next point. Quite frankly, that we need to make a motion from our office to be relieved for, for non-cooperation. When we were representing 
trial judge, we afforded information on Mr. Rowe, which returned to us, Judge. There's no communication between the DPA and the DPA. Did you send it to the post office box office? We sent it to multiple addresses. Objection, ma'am. Given the fact that it's clear, Judge, he's stated numerous times he doesn't want us to represent him, he will not cooperate with us, Judge. We're really, we can't effectively represent someone who does not want us. So if Your Honor requires a formal written motion, Judge, I can have that filed within a week. Realistically, Judge, we're asking to leave for non-cooperation. Objection, ma'am. I wish that... What is your objection? I'm objecting to the fact that there hasn't been any information forwarded. I love this part right here. It just shows that it's just a pure attention play. It has nothing to do with achieving any goals or getting anywhere. The public defender wants to withdraw from representation, and this guy does not want the public defender to represent him. So while the public defender is in the middle of trying to do exactly what he wants, he starts objecting to it and saying, I didn't receive something at my P.O. box. Well, if he would have cooperated slightly, he would have just handed it to you or talked to you or anything else. He probably sent it other places. It doesn't really matter. The point is, you don't want him representing you. He doesn't want to represent you, and he's trying to withdraw. Why are you getting in the way? To my office, his P.O. box. I put that information on record with Judge Smith. I received the recusal notice. No problem. All right? Now, if the Office of Public Defense or anybody, prosecution, whoever, stipulates that, they forward the information to our P.O. box, that's a lie. And we ask to receive, we ask for them to present proof of receipt or proof of consent of the correspondence. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? One of the things that you say is that you've never received a copy of the indictment. Exactly. Which indictment are you referring to? Either. Whatever information that you have on your desk, I don't have anything. I can resolve that problem right now. Mr. Kramer. I need you to make a copy of something. This I do like the judge for. I think it's a really good play. Let's do this on the record. He's here. He's claiming he never gets anything. Okay, fine. We're going to go through the court's file right here, make copies, and hand it to you on the record in open court. I don't have the old 0302, so I'm going to make copies of the ones that I do have. Okay. And then there's another one. As well, I don't have... Mr. Roberts, please, sir, please. I'm looking through the file. I can't listen to you and also look through the file at the same time. You can make one copy of each of these and bring them back to me. Thanks. Ma'am, while he's at it... Hold on just a second here. There's also other information that I'm addressing that he may want to copy. Pursuant to Rule 313, 3-3, Discovery and Inspection Rule, the prosecutor shall permit defendant to inspect... May I interrupt you? May I interrupt you for a moment, please? No, ma'am. May I interrupt you for a moment, please? No, ma'am. All right, let me know when you're done. I'm speaking for the record. For the record. All right, the record shall... The bottom line is... Public records... The ACL is placing information on the record. All right, the bottom line is, pursuant to your courtroom rule, 313, 3-3, B and C, I believe... I'm not on this side, so I'm not 100% familiar with it. But according to it... It's not going to be unintelligible to you? According to it, I'm not familiar with it. Right, I understand. So, just correct me if I'm wrong, but it stipulates that... It doesn't stipulate anything. Discovery. Discovery and Inspection Rule, 313, 3-3, B and C. 
<laughs> well, he asked her to to uh, correct him, and she did. But that 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 did not daunt him. He he just carried on with his nonsense. <laughs> then he moves on to uh, we we must now discuss jurisdiction. Of course, um, <clears throat> all I've ever seen in the other clips on this topic is her saying, "Hey, you don't have a proper motion on jurisdiction." I doubt he he he's filed one yet. The stipulation of prosecutors shall permit the defendant if you're claiming I'm a defendant. So I've been here almost eight visits, and uh, this prosecution has failed to prove jurisdiction, and uh, so have you. Uh, it stipulates that books, character, objects, papers, and documents obtained from or belonging to the defendant, records of statements or confessions, signed or unsigned, by the defendant, or copies thereof, and the summary of any admissions and declarations of his penal interest made by the defendant that belong to the prosecution but not recorded, books, papers, documents, etc. I'm supposed to be given a copy of that, if not the originals. Those documents are not considered contraband or are not listed in any of the indictments that you may have before you. So I'm either requesting for the return of the original certified documents, the public records that were taken, or copies of those documents according to the rule which says I have right to have. I'm also going to address that uh, on the 12th, I believe a week ago, stipulated that today's matter will be relative to jurisdiction, your jurisdiction or the prosecutor's uh, authority of jurisdiction. You have no jurisdiction, neither does the prosecution, Burlington County, the state of New Jersey, or the United States. So I'm letting you know that now. I'm asserting that I'm protected by the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. We have to take seven pursuant to Article 4. You must dismiss this case. For the record, on the record, let the record show. Well, there you have it. Uh, it's, the, it's the same stuff. It's it's a different clip than I've had before, but it's, it's all he's talking about is I don't want the defense attorney and I want to raise jurisdiction. Um, and then when the defense attorney tries to get out, he objects to it. <laughs> and he still hasn't brought a motion uh, for jurisdiction. He will lose that motion when he does, but you gotta bring it even to qualify to lose. Um, prior to that, she doesn't need to address it at all, and I don't think she's going to. Here at Law Talk, we answer all your legal questions and give a detailed analysis of uh, current events. Who am I kidding? We just mostly laugh at horrible, horrible court appearances. And uh, occasionally you might learn something, but I promise I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Thanks for watching.